Victoria Columbia, stage five. Here we go. Alto de v del Vino goes up to 2,800 meters, 30k at like 6%. It's absolutely bonkers. Anyway, this is basically the start, the main part of the climb. I mean, obviously it's gone on for 10k, but this is where Nidoman gets dropped very early doors. Lachenko starts going nuclear for Tejada and he gets dropped. Very odd. Don't really understand. Movistar sends someone to pace. So it's like maybe the pace is just too high for Nidoman. Anyway, I don't know. Chavez goes early. EF's a really, really strong squad here. And Chavez decides to light it up. As it's such a drafting climb, you really can play quite a lot of team tactics on this. So I think it's pretty clever sending Chavez up the road. Then you can see it gets brought back. And then Carapaz goes. As Carapaz goes, Contreras, who used to race for like Astana Quick Step. He's in the yellow jersey. He was in the break uh, two days ago. Obviously, watch that video. I'll link all my vids of Tour Colombia. And he looks really good. So he attacks across, no stress. Caicedo, who used to race for EF uh, currently and also won Vuelta El Taquera. He was also uh, helping. Uh, well, he looked strong. But here, Contreras is pacing. Now, he actually has like 30, 40 seconds on Carapaz because of the break the other day. So he doesn't really need to do much. These are some amateur riders on the left-hand side. But what you'll see, and I think Bernal gets confused, is EF keep attacking. So here we go. You can see Chavez now is launching. So there was like Sosa, Bernal in this group, Caicedo, uh, Cepeda, um, as well as Tejada. Now Chavez is launching across here. Chavez actually looks really good. Uh, he went across no stress to try and, I guess, help Carapaz maybe set the pace, maybe just have numerical advantage. But now he didn't really do much except just ride really hard on his wheel of Cepeda, then Caicedo, then we got some amateur lad who's just launching. Then we got Sosa, then we got Tejada. Sosa again rode pretty smart. He didn't really do much. He, like you didn't see him on TV. He just was riding. And you can see here Caicedo going absolutely thumb on the right hand side trying to get across this gap. He looks really good. So here again you can see it's like Chavez, there was also a break up the road, which is why there's like random riders coming across. So you can see Iran is actually quite, quite far back with this other new Columbia rider. Uh, so yeah, they're getting back to the front. You can see EF now have a real strong numerical advantage. Contreras still riding on the front. I don't think that is a massive brain idea. And Bernal is moving, uh, moving back across again with Chavez on his wheel. No, I don't think that is Chavez. I'm pretty sure that's actually Kai uh, Cepeda, sorry. Uh, so yeah. Bernal looking strong, uh, I think stronger than I thought he would. There is Cepeda, actually, sorry, he's getting across it. Yeah, I've got like four riders, but on this climb, you really just have to be the strongest, and I think the way Contreras rode, I really thought that he was just going to be able to control this. He doesn't need to do anything, and I don't know why he rode. In my opinion, this is like not the biggest brain move, because Caicedo, again, he's further back, so it doesn't matter. It's really only Carapaz who's going to be able to drop him, so I just go Carapaz, I don't need to give you a turn. And then maybe the reason he didn't do it is because he was going to get started to get one, two. So now you can see there's two EF guys here, Bernal and Caicedo. So again, it's like he's always outnumbered. But I don't think he needs to stress too much, although he is in yellow. I do think you can lean on the World Tour riders more than necessarily he did. Uh, and I think in hindsight, maybe he, he could have played it slightly differently. But Carapaz looked really strong. And like again, these guys are kicking it off with so far to go. We've still got 8K to go. And it's already down to like this group of five. Uh, Cepeda at the back is actually looking really good, stepped up it seems. Um, obviously this racing suits him a lot more, uh, it's a high altitude and everything else. But this is maybe the reason why I want to do it. Chavez gets back and attacks straight away. This is a downhill section, so Contreras actually has to burn a lot of watts to do this. And everyone else is just going to be in his wheel. So this is not ideal. And Chavez really did pay, play a good role as a teammate today. He's attacking, attacking now, no stress. And then Carapaz goes chow chow as soon as it gets steep again. And Caicedo on the right-hand side looks so strong. And I thought he was going to get in this wheel. And this really is the deciding part uh, for the victory on the stage. Carapaz goes thermo. And like, he is accelerating for a long time. Like, he's seriously going for it. 5K left. Like, this is all well above, like, 2,400 meters. Like, it's actually crazy how high it is and how good they all look. You can see Contreras is trying to come across. And I thought, okay, we're going to have the same trio. But Carapaz just keeps going. He just keeps going and drilling it. And here, Caicedo, he looks back and that means straight away the legs aren't there because he's basically on his wheel. Like you can see maybe half a bike length off his wheel and Carapaz looks back and he just keeps going. And here the, there's a big gap. Bernal just didn't surge at all. He just rode real steady, which I think maybe he knew he wasn't at the level of Carapaz. So there's no point trying to trying to do anything. You just ride really hard and hope for the best. Uh, obviously, it's a draft incline, but it's not really too important like at this altitude, it's really just too strongest. But you can see, Caceta never gets on the wheel. And here, he's looking down, 4K to go. And Carapaz is just accelerating. And as soon as you look down, there's just some signs. When someone looks down, it's like, oh, they're definitely not going too well. And then round this corner again, 
Carapaz is looking back. He can see Caicedo's on his wheel. And I think this is when he really knows he's gonna, if he accelerates, he's good. And Contreras here, I think, is clever in some ways because he realizes if I blow myself up, I can lose yellow. So he's just like, okay, we're just going to ride steady. So Caicedo here, like you can see, that's a big gap suddenly going out. Like it's actually like a significant, it's not a bike length, it's, it's a lot of bike lengths. And going around this corner really is when you see the difference between Car Carapaz and Caicedo, which is why I'm showing such a long clip. Because again, he's looking back. And just on this part, it starts to flatten off, which in some ways you think, oh, okay, it might help Caicedo. He's just got to sprint to try and close that gap. But Carapaz throws his bottle and then just decides, right, we're going to get out the saddle and sprint this last little bit. And the gap seems to just balloon at this point. And I don't know, obviously the speed's quicker, so obviously the gap's going to look bigger because there's more time. But that was it. Done. Thanks for coming. You can see the final. It gets quite steep. Carapaz is here. But look at Contreras, he's rode really, really hard and consistently. He knows that if he, if he stays within like 40 seconds, he's probably going to have this thing. You can see Sosa looking good um, behind as well with Bernal. Uh, and again, Chavez is looking decent. But yeah, Carapaz, ciao, ciao. Thanks for coming, boys. Takes the Dubsky, no worries. Uh, he did look really good. He attacked early, like really early, like 15k to go. And then in the end, he just, yeah, absolutely battered everyone. But not in yellow the time gap was not enough uh Contreras is still in yellow I believe uh by about 24 seconds so pretty interesting what they'll do tomorrow tomorrow's a pretty flat day um so yeah Carapaz 24 seconds off Caicedo 26 seconds back so it'll be interesting to see what they do but now looks like he's in good condition as well and Iron Man maybe not so much Sosa looked okay but again it's like these 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 clients really suit the small boys like uh, Sosa and Cepeda. What they can do in Europe is always different just because there's a lot of, it's a lot harder on the run-ins, the climbs uh, on at altitude, etc. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, last stage of Tour of Columbia is tomorrow. Crack out a video on that. And uh, anyway, yeah, just watching. See you in the next one. Victoria, Victoria, Victoria. Victoria para la locomotora. Qué bien Johnny Caicedo. Qué bien Johnny Caicedo y qué bien Rodri Contreras que para mí va a seguir siendo líder. Dale Rodri con fuerza que seguir siendo líder. Vamos Rodri que seguir siendo líder. Sí señores y señores. Segundos. Rodrigo Contreras sigue siendo el líder del Tour Colombia 2024. Felicitaciones a Richard Carapaz y a todo Ecuador. Meten uno y dos en la tapa. Tercero Rodri Contreras a 16 segundos manteniendo el liderato mientras Vemos aquí el sprint entre Egan Bernal, Rigo Berturán e Iván Ramiro Sosa. Esto es un espectáculo de lujo. Felicitaciones en serio por esta etapa que nos acaban de regalar todo el Education First, todo el NU, toda la Selección Colombia. Aquí el Petrolight también haciéndose presente y un batallador también mostrándolo. Aquí la producción a Esteban Chávez que lo intentó de lejos, fue el que propuso. El primer intento de romper la carrera fue de Esteban Chávez a falta de 15 kilómetros de meta y le sale... Redonda. Le sale perfecta. Le redonda Mire. al Education First, mientras aquí ah, vemos también a Daniel Méndez, que, ojo, y lo voy a nombrar abiertamente, Rodri Contreras, la defensa del título se la debe también a este señor. Se yeah. la debe a Daniel Méndez y a Sergio Luciano, Gracias, pero el, el, el mejor, el que hizo la persecución fue Daniel Méndez. Venga, Impresionante lo suyo, Sosa. Daniel. Sosa también hizo un trabajo increíble en los últimos kilómetros porque él se quedó atrás a acompañar a Nairo todo lo que pudo, se cogió una gran ventaja y cuando deciden dejarlo ir empieza a recortar, a alcanzar y llega ahí en ese grupo con Egan Bernal, llega ahí acompañando también Uh, bueno, con este, este último grupo que, que está llegando y con Rick, y con Rick.